Welcome to Parenting Successful Teens, the podcast that cuts through the overwhelm and stress of this phase and offers parents simple, practical, cognitive, science-based strategies for keeping their teens on track. Join master coach and real-life mom, Allie Irwin, to talk about real teens, real problems, and the skills it takes to raise successful adults. Hello, everybody. Today, I want to talk to you about people pleasing for moms. And I want to start by talking about the difference between people who just naturally enjoy making other people happy and being a people pleaser. Because we are told, especially as women, that valuing other people's happiness is what makes us a good person. And then at the same time, we're told that being a people pleaser makes us needy and weak. And this contradiction, like how are you supposed to make other people happy without being a people pleaser because that makes you needy and weak and you should value your own, you know, what you want. And like all of that gets kind of like mashed together into a damned if you do, damned if you don't tailspin. I want to start to unwind that. And I want to start by talking about the genetic component of being agreeable versus the social component of being agreeable. And maybe you've noticed, maybe you've heard the phrase, like some people are just born ornery. (laughs) And there's like a teeny bit of truth to that because science has shown that up to 50% of our personality is based on our genes. And the reason that our genes affect our personality is because they affect how the cells in our brain communicate with each other and what neural pathways form in response to different experiences that we have. And this information is based on the five-factor personality model. And this model has been around since the 30s and 40s, and it is far and away the most scientifically valid model for Western English-speaking cultures like ours. So what the research shows is that approximately 50% of our personality is defined by our genes and about 50% of our personality is created by our experiences, the way we were raised, our choices, where we were raised. So we're predisposed to be a certain way and then our experiences either reinforce that predisposition or shift our genes. So if you think of an introvert raised by extroverts, that child is going to be more extroverted than an introvert raised by other introverts. Or I'm thinking of those YouTube videos where the warthog is raised by dogs. I don't know if you've seen that one. And the warthog has all of his warthog genes, right? Like he's still a warthog, but he does these things that are dog-like, like wagging his tail and greeting his owners at the gate because of his experiences of living with other dogs. Like he does dog-like things, even though he's still a warthog. In the same way, highly agreeable people have a genetic predisposition to value social harmony over just what the facts say. Kind of the joke about low agreeable people is that they don't care what you think, they care what Google thinks. Whereas a more highly agreeable person, like even if Google says there's a better way, like if you want to do it a certain way, they might be willing to go along with that. And being high agreeable is great. I'm high agreeable by nature. And when I read the description, like high agreeable people tend to be more positive and more optimistic, even not just about themselves, but about human nature in general. They tend to believe that most people are basically good, honest, decent, and hardworking. And they tend to make more of an effort when there's a disagreement to make it right. They tend to be the people that reach out to their friends and stay in touch. And here's where it kind of coves into people pleasing is their default answer when asked to do something or give something is yes. Okay. Like usually they say yes, unless there's a reason that they're going to say no. And a lower agreeable person, their default answer is actually no, unless there's a good reason to do it. So if you think about high agreeableness, 
as, you know, like a genetic piece. And then that highly agreeable person gets socially conditioned to put other people's needs ahead of their own, not because they want to, but because they're afraid of having someone be mad at them or disappointed in them or judge them or reject them if they don't go along, that's when that high agreeable nature gets socially conditioned into being people pleasing. And the the part that's not pretty about people pleasing is essentially it's a form of manipulating the other person to like you or to have a good opinion of you, to think of you in a certain way as a good, as a nice person by subjugating your own needs. And in a way, like this is the harshest way I had someone explain it to me when they were trying, when I was working on my people pleaser tendencies, they said, essentially, you're lying in order to maintain harmony. It was helpful to have it explained in that way to me because people pleasing has this veneer of social nicety about it. But if you say that something is okay and it's not okay just to maintain harmony, just to get along, you are in effect lying to the person. And this is more of a problem for high agreeable people because their default is to say yes Just to kind of summarize all of that, if you are going along with someone because you truly want to, that's just being agreeable and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you are going along with someone and you don't want to, that's people pleasing. With all that I said, like this for sure is more of a problem for women than it is for men because of that environmental factor, that way that we're socially conditioned. But you can absolutely be a people pleaser and be a man. And you can absolutely be a people pleaser and be a low agreeable person by, you know, your genetic makeup. And for sure, those are the most unhappy people because they at their core are going against their very nature. And if you are a low agreeable person by nature, I want to say like low agreeableness has its benefits. I'm married to a low agreeable person and he really balances me out. They're more likely to be data driven, efficient, direct, steadfast. And if something necessary but unpopular needs to be done, they can do it more easily than a high agreeable person. Okay, because it just makes more sense to them. Like their brains are wired differently. So today on the podcast, what I want you to think about doing is learning from the low agreeable people. Okay, and I want you to do this in an effort to start to tease out the difference for yourself between being a high agreeable person and being a people pleaser. And the way to do that is to make some different choices and then see how those choices feel. To start to notice when you're doing something because you want to and when you're doing something because you're afraid of disappointing someone else. So I want to offer you the challenge today to disappoint someone, to say no to a request, not to be a jerk, but just to interrupt our habit of saying yes to things that we'd rather say no to. So for you, that could look like making what you want for dinner instead of what you think your kids will like. Wearing what you want to wear, even if it makes your teenage daughter roll her eyes. (laughs) Maybe it's letting a call go to voicemail when you're busy, like when you don't want to be interrupted. Or You know, in this time that we're in where there's so much terrible news saying, you know, I'd rather not discuss that when a friend wants to tell you like what his thoughts are about, you know, something that he read on Facebook. Okay. Or it could be even saying no to when your teen is asking to do something that you don't feel comfortable with. And 
it really doesn't matter what you pick. Like if the thought of disappointing someone feels challenging, go ahead and pick something small. Because really what I want to encourage you to do is just build the capacity to say no to others when we don't want to say yes. And for a people pleaser, that means interrupting that default yes. Okay, we want to keep high agreeable people in their happy zone and out of the people pleaser zone. And low agreeable people, we want to free you up to be closer to your true nature. Because as I said, low agreeable people, like they get kind of a bad rap, but they perform a really useful role in society. We run more efficiently when we let our low agreeable people be more data driven. And the more that you do this, you'll, the more you'll be able to tell which zone you're in. Okay. You'll be able to tell from how it feels when you say yes or no in your own body. You'll start to notice when you're saying yes or no for yourself and when you're doing it just to go along. And if you're cringing at the thought of disappointing someone, I want to share a story with you about how valuable this can be. So my daughter and I, this is a pretty recent story. My daughter and I were going to visit my mom this year at Christmas time. My daughter was finishing up a co-op in Ohio. So we were going to drive down for Christmas, Christmas Eve, and then, you know, celebrate Christmas Eve with her on Christmas morning and then help her pack up her apartment. And then my husband was going to drive her home for winter break. And my daughter and I were going to continue on to go see my mom. And on Christmas Eve, like I just got this weird internal nudge that we shouldn't go to Iowa, that it wasn't the right time. And I had all kinds of logical reasons for it. But like that wasn't why I was saying no. And so when I called my mom and told her that we weren't coming, basically her granddaughter and her daughter weren't coming like Christmas day or the day after Christmas when she was expecting us, she was really disappointed. And the fact that it was kind of like these vague reasons, I mean, there were logical reasons, but they weren't like good enough to disappoint her in the way that she was disappointed and hurt. Like I felt like a pretty crappy daughter. I was only able to do it because I had practiced being willing to disappoint people. Like only because I'd built up that sort of disappointing people muscle was I able to let it stand. The way I was able to do it from a place of love, a place of trusting myself and my instincts about what the right thing to do was. So she's mad and sad and disappointed in all the feelings. And we pack up and we drive my daughter home and... <laughs> It was like maybe a week, a week and a half. And I'm like, nope, okay, now's the time we, we have to go. We'll, we'll figure this out. And so we worked out kind of a reverse of the plan where we would drive out to see my mom. And then, you know, my husband would, would meet her and we'd move our, my daughter in for her spring term of college. The second night that we were in Iowa with my mom, she had a stroke with us sitting in her living room and with my brother and sister-in-law there because they had come over to see us. And because I had followed my instincts and developed my ability to disappoint someone that I love, we were there when she had a stroke. She didn't have a stroke and then go to bed thinking it was nothing. I don't claim to understand how all of this works. But I do know beyond a shadow of a doubt that being a people pleaser is not of service to your family. That being willing to do what you think is right, even when other people don't like it, allowed me to be there when my mom needed me the most. I want you to try it. I want you to reach out to me if you need support in doing it, because I'm telling you, I've practiced it and it's still not easy. So if you have questions, feel free to email me or schedule one of my free 
consult sessions where we'll go through what's going on with you and you'll leave the call knowing what your next best step is, being equipped to do what's next. Okay, you can grab one of those sessions. You go to my website, AllieIrwin.com, and click on the Work With Me tab, and there's a big Let's Talk button. Actually, those buttons are all over my website. Just click on one of those and grab a session, and we'll talk. So I hope this has been useful to you. As always, you're in my thoughts all week. I love recording these podcasts because I'm always thinking about you. I'll talk to you next week.